Well, yes, of course, but you know, Thunder in the Mountains is a deep, sophisticated book, and as such, it asks a lot of its readers. And I don't believe that the reader who picks this book up is going to be somebody who needs to be coddled or spoon-fed or have their sensibilities swaddled in soft, puffy balls of cotton. You know, I think too many writers and publishers sell their readers short in that regard. You know, I'm an avid hunter. Uh, you know, I haven't hunted that much over the past you know, couple decades, mostly just because I live in San Diego and it simply doesn't have the proximity to the kind of really great hunting that one finds in Nevada or Idaho or Montana. But as a hunter, I'm well aware that many people in this country are disturbed by hunting. And I respect and I understand that sentiment. However, the pro-hunting, anti-hunting debate isn't really germane to the themes of my book. Rather, it's relevant uh, only because if you're a person who truly wants to understand the gun culture and the shooting epidemic in America today, I believe it's critical that you understand our country's hunting culture and that culture's unique history. You know, the NRA didn't start out as a politically relentless arm of the American gun merchants who were interested in, you know, the frictionless sale of everything from handguns to semi-automatic weapons to military assault rifles. Rather, it's the National Rifle Association. And in the 50s and 60s, it was comprised almost exclusively of hunters and outdoor enthusiasts. And these people, frankly, had a dim view of handguns in particular. They were fairly fanatic about gun safety and feared that their rights to hunt might be infringed due to a public opinion backlash brought about by all the mayhem caused by people with handguns. In the late 70s, however, you know, the gun merchants staged a coup of sorts at the NRA, and they took the helm of the organization and they turned it into the feared political juggernaut that it is today. But make no mistake, it was once a pro-hunting organization almost exclusively. And in fact, I was an NRA member growing up, and I even took a three-week long uh, NRA hunter safety course about two months before I shot myself in the foot. And, you know, the course was excellent, but, you know, I clearly dozed off at a critical juncture. So uh, that's not really on the NRA. Um, but as for hunting, I think it's important that we understand that the men, and it was almost exclusively men at first, who blazed trails west were all skilled hunters. It wasn't a hobby, it wasn't a pastime, it was a necessity. And that's why the hunting culture is so deeply ingrained, ingrained throughout the rural west to this day. Uh, to sugarcoat what it's like to put a 30 odd six bullet through a majestic mule deer would be disingenuous and I believe a disservice to the readers. You know, the chapters that were difficult for even me to write had to do with fur trapping. But again, you can't really understand the culture of the West without understanding fur trapping. Uh, and that's because the fur trappers who came West were here first. They were the first Europeans and the first explorers in the region, and they blazed the way uh, for everybody else who followed. And yes, fur trapping is a brutish business, in my opinion, uh, but the entire Western half of North America was founded on it. Uh, as an American, it's disingenuous to disown it as a heritage. I think you can dislike it, but you can't disown it. There's a difference. Uh, you know, it's a part of how we became who we are as a country, and it has a lot to do with guns. Uh, you know, I actually had a paragraph in my original manuscript at the end of the fur trapping chapter, and I basically apologized for having killed animals for fur. But I ended up taking out that editorial, you know, sentence uh, just because I wanted to keep the book free from any editorializing. And again, I think it would have sold my readers short.